mahasiswa Magister Kebijakan Publik Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, National University of Singapore, mengadakan acara study trip ke Indonesia dengan mengunjungi beberapa kota besar di Indonesia. Salah satu agenda mereka adalah seminar atau diskusi seperti yang dilakukan saat berada di Jakarta. Para mahasiswa salah satu universitas ternama di Singapura ini mendaulat Presiden ke-6 RI Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono menjadi pembicara kunci di acara gathering yang berlangsung di Hotel Millennium. Tema yang diambil adalah Perspectives on Indonesia's Policy Challenges. Pihak Universitas meyakini SB menjadi referensi yang tepat untuk menyampaikan kuliah, membagi ilmu dan pengalamannya kepada para mahasiswa karena reputasi dan kapabilitasnya. The remarkable uh, uh, achievements of uh, President SBY, and um, of course he's had many, many uh, achievements, and, but I want to mention probably what I consider to be his most spectacular achievement for which he deserves to go into the Guinness Book of World Records. He is probably the most democratically elected direct president in the world. Now, what do I mean by that? If you look at the number of votes that the, the presidential candidates have received in direct elections, let me give you the numbers. Putin got 49 million in 2004, Medvedev got Uh, 52 million in 2008, Lula of Brazil got 58 million in 2006, Obama got 69 million in 2008, and the number one winner is President SBY with 74 million votes in 2009. So a vote of... <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, no other leader has broken this record. Dalam paparannya, SB membagi banyak hal kepada para mahasiswa yang berasal dari berbagai negara yang sedang menimba ilmu di National University of Singapore. Salah satunya adalah kebijakan-kebijakan nasional pro rakyat yang sukses dan menjadi program yang dikaji dalam skala internasional. In my view, in order to succeed, green growth, green economy, sustainable development has to be facilitated by government policies spotted by all government departments and agencies, implemented by governors, regions, and mayors, driven by private sectors, powered by technology and innovation, embraced by the general public, propagated by re religious leaders, and practiced and inculcated by families and the individuals. It also has to be pursued in a mutually supportive international environment. Global collaboration, global cooperation really matters in this connection. In the Indonesian case, all these elements, for example, contributed to the success of Indonesia's effort to plant four billion trees in four years. In just four years, with the active participation of the officials, military, companies, workers, students, and the general public, we managed to plant four billion trees across Indonesia. It was a good example of the combined power of idealism and collaboration. This fact shows that we can move from grid economy to green economy, green growth, in the same way. Indeed, my friend, Great economy had harmed Indonesia for a long time. Great was at the root of the colonialism and extreme capitalism which plundered our natural resources for centuries for the benefit of an oppressive few. After independence, Great was the motivator of widespread corruption that kept our people poor and inequality high. And unchecked grid was the reason for the severe loss of our tropical rainforest in the past, in the 1970s, which released enormous amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Any scheme driven by grid is bound to fail. I believe um, in this very strongly. It is not only morally wrong. It is bad business. It is economically destructive. As we struggle with the climate crisis, green economy must give way to green economy, to green growth. 
the international community is now embarking on the most ambitious, ambitious project of economic transformation to decarbonize a heavily carbonized world economy to achieve a climate resilient future. In this grand project, we are all in this together because we are all affected by it and because we are all part of the climate solutions. I remain optimistic. I have a talk with my good friend, Pakisor, that we have to be optimistic, causes optimism probably, um, because in the coming years we will see more breakthrough technology and game-changing innovation that would make it much easier and cheaper to decarbonize our economy. But the clock is ticking. A decade is not a long time. It is a blink in the eye of history, which is why it is critical for all of us to mainstream green growth, green economy, throughout all segments of the world economy. Professor Mabubani, dear students, in this gathering, I have explained my own experiences in leading Indonesia, including how, to a large extent, I have fulfilled my promises before becoming the president of Indonesia, especially, especially related to peace, prosperity, justice, and democracy, including what we have achieved and what we have not attained yet. I have also discussed about Indonesia's journey in reform and democratization, about the relation between democracy and good governance, as well as our challenges to build a better future. I have elaborated the mega trends which will impact all countries in the world that all leaders and policymakers should be paying attention to. And I have touched on green growth and sustainable development as the vital aspect of our future. Usai penyampaian kuliah oleh SBY, acara dilanjutkan dengan sesi diskusi. Para mahasiswa sangat antusias bertanya dan meminta pandangan SBY terkait problematika internasional yang sedang dihadapi saat ini. Uh, my question is, uh, because in your speech you talked about uh, how ASEAN still remains an important part of Indonesia's foreign policy. Um, what do you think is the way forward for ASEAN uh, to further enhance uh, regional stability and um, what do you foresee might be some of the challenges it might face, uh, especially in uh, navigating uh, US-China relations? Thank you. So number one, uh, if you are asking me uh, the way forward, ASEAN must do uh, its best in becoming stronger uh, economy. Number two, ASEAN must play more in ensuring peace, stability, and order in the region. Uh, what we need is stable Asia uh, that uh, we could prevent and avoid conflicts to happen. Uh, geopolitics is changing now in the region. You are eyewitnessing the situation in South China Sea, East China Sea, the Korean Peninsula. So ASEAN can play a positive role um, in, once again, uh, being part of the maintenance of regional uh, peace, stability, and order. Uh, over the South China issues, for example, even though uh, the solution will be dealt bilaterally, uh, China with Malaysia, for example, China with the Philippines, China with Brunei, uh, and with Vietnam, but collectively, uh, ASEAN must encourage all parties to go ahead with uh, peaceful processes, uh, back to international laws, back to the negotiating table, and avoid gunboat diplomacy. We need to uh, uh, prevent uh, open conflict or even military, military class that happen because of the um, unmanaged uh, conflict over South China Sea. Suasana hangat pada acara ini ditutup dengan foto bersama. <tuh>